What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Joel Culpepper Outdoors. I'm Joel Culpepper and today I want to talk a little bit about releases. Now when when we're thinking about archery releases most of us are probably going to think of this first. This is just a standard wrist strap release. It's got a trigger here. When you pull the trigger it opens the jaw which triggers or uh, which makes you know, let's go to the D loop so the bow fires um but some of us have also started using these which is a handheld release not as common as a <clears throat> a wrist strap release with the index trigger on it like this one but this is certainly an option available and most of your professional shooters, whether they be 3D shooters or they're shooting Vegas, whatever it is, most of them are using a handheld release like this. Now, handheld releases come in three different styles. The only one I have is a back tension, and I've talked about this in a different video, but really, the way this particular release is activated, so you, you hook it around your loop, and you pull back, you anchor in, keep your thumb on this as you draw the bow back, and then you anchor in, then you let go, and you just pull back, and then it breaks. So, <clears throat> just to do that again, in case you've never shot one of these, just to let you see it again, you're going to take and hook this, hook this part around your D-loop, so you can just take it hook it through like that right there and then you're going to take and get your hand in a comfortable position and then wrap your thumb around your thumb barrel draw back anchor in keep your pressure and you're going to let go of your thumb barrel and pull back and push forward and then it's just going to go off so <clears throat> this release is not as popular for hunting uh, because you can't you can't force a shot to go off with this effectively. Now, if you just had to, or if, if you so desire, you could take this release and as soon as you come back in a draw, you just do like that. You just pull really, really hard and make it go off. But that's gonna cause your bow hand to torque probably because that because you're pulling so hard it's very likely gonna cause your shot to not go where you want it to go. So that's why this is preferred uh, mostly for target archery, just because you can really control your shot. You've got plenty of time. You don't have to be in a big hurry like you might in a hunting situation. Now, that being said, at least in my experience, the degree of accuracy that you get out of this release is way better than the accuracy that you'll get out of this. Now, I want to add something to that. I um, had shot for two and a half years before I swapped over to this release. And that entire length of time before I bought the handheld, I was only shooting this style of release. I had a, a Scott Recon uh, Wildcat 2 that I shot for a couple years, and then I just bought this one, which is the Recon, um, this past October. So, <clears throat> I know I, I'm, I'm trying to get to where I need to be. I'm sorry if I'm taking too long. Um, but this is the only type of handheld release that I really have a lot of experience with. I've shot some hinges. I've shot some thumb buttons. But... I, as far as the thumb buttons go, I couldn't find one that was in my price range at the time that really fit me that well. And with the hinge, I kind of had the same problem. And after shooting this release, which is a stand onyx, this is a large, but it's a back tension, <clears throat> as I've said before, I actually went back and shot one of my friends. Uh, he's got the Ultraview hinge, which is a medium. So it's really small and my hands don't fit it very well. But since I have so much experience shooting this one, I was able to actually use that hinge effectively for the first time earlier this week. 
Now, I don't plan to purchase an UltraView hinge um, just because UltraView does not make a back tension. And <clears throat> I really like the control that you get from this back tension release. And it just really makes me feel confident when I'm shooting my bow to have this instead of a hinge. Um, and of course, that's personal preference. Um, I, I will possibly get a Stan Onyx in a hinge. And uh, I'll probably get one in a thumb button before deer season. I, I may not, but I'm, I'm seriously considering it. So I can swap everything over to handhelds just for the simplicity. I like the anchor points a little bit better. I feel like I control my shot better with these than I do with a normal wrist strap index release. Now, why do so many people start with the wrist release? It is so incredibly simple to use one of these releases. Now, this is a little bit higher end one. Uh, the Scott Recon runs, I think, $90 retail. Um, <clears throat> and the Wildcat 2 is 80 and the reason that I spent the money on it is because this was this is your one constant. When you go from bow to bow, you go company to company, you switch your arrows up, you, anything you change on your bow, this is a constant. And this is one of the most important constants you can have because you always feel the same way when you're shooting with this hand, or you should theoretically. So that's why I spent more money on this than some people do to start. If you don't have the money to get a nicer release, that's okay. I'm just explaining why I did it. Now, the wrist release, wrist strap index release is so simple. All you do is you're going to take this and pull it down. Then you're going to put your loop through there, let it go. It's locked in. It's not going anywhere. You can see no matter how hard I pull this, it's not going to go off. So what I do is I'll draw back. And now what I used to do is I would I would start high and then just drop my arm. And then as soon as my pin touched where I want to hit, I just punch the trigger, which is not a good habit to have. But there's a lot of people out there that with these releases, they'll just take and just, just hammer it. And in some situations when you're hunting, you, you know, you get an adrenaline rush or whatever. I understand it happens, but in your backyard practicing, it's not a good habit to just sit here and every time you shoot, it's, it's going to cause you to, to flinch. <clears throat> it's going to cause you to shake because if I'm, if I'm going to hit this and I just miss it or whatever, but I know when I hammer that release, it's supposed to go off. If for whatever reason, my finger, you know, like, well, if my finger just rolls off like that or something, then I'm probably going to do like that and my bow is going to let down and the animal that I'm trying to shoot is going to know I'm there and basically your hunt's busted. So what do I recommend you do with the wrist strap release to keep from just punching it? Well, I'm just going to go over what I do to kind of shoot this like you would shoot a back tension almost and get really surprise shots, but really consistent results. And so what I'll do, I'll wrap my hand around right here. And then, of course, if I can get this set right, I'll draw my bow back, anchor in like so. And now this may not be the best habit, but I'll always take my hand and just do this. The reason I do this is I don't want any any potential way for me to punch this trigger. I want my entire hand off the release. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm just going to sit here and hold it like this. And then I'm going to take my finger and just touch this trigger. And I'm going to slowly squeeze this trigger just like I would squeeze the trigger of a rifle. And you see right there, it goes off. <clears throat> now, how can you know if you're punching the trigger? Well, the most obvious way is when you draw back and shoot, you do this. So you see when I punch the trigger, and I'll do this again so you can see. And I'll do it again with my hand out. You see how this stays in my hand, the, the actual release mechanism? 
And that's because I'm putting immediate pressure on that and I'm, I'm really gripping it when I slam that trigger. Now, that's a, a really good way to know if you're punching the trigger or not. And if you can't tell if you're just slamming it, check and see after you shoot, are you still holding the release or is it just kind of hanging there? Because if you do it the way that I just suggested, where you just take and slowly creep back on that, you see it just falls. Sorry, it's some kind of crazy noise. Um, <clears throat> anyways, if I, pardon me, if I get back here and I take this and still in my hand, I punch that trigger. Now, if I take and I open my hand up and wrap my finger around that trigger, just push and pull just like you would with this release. So if I'm shooting this release, I'm going to take and get in my anchor point, and I'm going to push and pull until it breaks. I've got a little bit of a mess over here, if you couldn't tell. I know this video seems kind of, kind of crazy all over the place, but just bear with me. I hope I can help somebody with this. Um, but anyways, with this, just very slightly squeeze the trigger and boom, it goes off and I didn't punch it. Squeeze the trigger, pull back with this hand, push forward a little bit with your bow hand. Don't put too much forward pressure with your bow hand because that is going to cause you to shake if you have a prolonged hold. That was one of the things I learned after shooting this release. If I'm just sitting there and I'm just, and I get in my back wall and I've got my back tension and then I just start pushing and pulling and the shot doesn't go off, I start, this hand kind of starts to do this, and it's very exaggerated, but just so you can kind of see, hand starts to kind of do this, and then the shot breaks, and it just feels weird, and your arrow can go crazy places, and the shot just doesn't feel good, so don't put too much, don't push too much with your bow hand, because that is going to cause you to shake, more I, I just re i recommend that you you work on having a consistent amount of pressure in your back wall and the back tensions are really good about helping with that so i'm getting my back wall just let go pull them back pull them back pull them back pull them back and break now <clears throat> this is good to train for a surprise shot but you can train for a surprise shot with this as well. And I hope that you can see kind of how it works. And under I hope you understand why it works at the same time. And it's not, it's not real hard to do. You just have to break a habit if you punch the trigger. And it, if you do punch the trigger, that's okay. I did it for a long time myself. I had to train my way out of it, just like I'm explaining to you. But... you can train out of it. It's not that hard. And there are lots of YouTube videos. Um, and I know there's some people like Joel Turner out there um, at Shot IQ that are just really good at this kind of stuff. And his son, Bodie Turner, is one of the greatest archers of this generation, if not the greatest archer of my generation. He's just so consistent. He shoots really well. And <clears throat> they preach not punching your trigger. Stay present in the moment work through your shot. Sometimes, yes, you will punch the trigger. And when it happens, that's okay. Just make a try to make a habit of pushing and pulling through your shot instead of just making the shot go off. And you will shoot better. I can almost guarantee it. You don't have to spend $200, $300 to get one of these to train a surprise shot. You can do it with your regular old wrist strap release. Just take push pull and just squeeze a little bit and let it go off. So I would be really, I, I'm real interested to see. I know there's got to be somebody that's going to watch this video that shoots a thumb button. So I really want to know how you train for a surprise shot with a thumb button. Do you kind of do the same things that I'm suggesting you do with the index? Do you keep pulling? Do you wrap your, your thumb 
you know, you draw back like more like this, and then do you wrap your thumb around the barrel and just slowly squeeze, or do you take and wrap your thumb around that barrel and then push and pull and let that back tension actually activate that release? I, I would really like to know uh, what you guys that are shooting the thumb buttons do, and uh, for hinges, I mean, I understand how to shoot a hinge, but if you're using one of those too, please let me know what your shot process is. How do you make sure that you don't punch the trigger? How do you keep your shots more accurate? And <clears throat> like I said, I, I really hope this video helps someone. I'm not a professional archer by any means. I, I'm a decent shot. I, I'm not the greatest. I, I'm definitely not the worst. I, I, I put in a lot more work than most people do to be a little bit better. But <clears throat> I hope that this advice is, is good advice. I hope it's solid. And I hope that somebody somewhere actually gets something from this video and I can help you be a more accurate archer. And if you want me to keep doing some of these videos like this where I give some little tips and tricks maybe to help you shoot better, uh, just let me know in the comments. And if you have something for me, let me know. I know I'm not as good of a shot as I need to be. Now, like I said, I shoot really well. I shoot incredibly well at distance, especially once I swapped over to this release. But uh, might not be a coincidence there. Might be. I don't really know. I hadn't shot this other one in a while, so. Um, but I shine at distance, and that's really strange coming from somebody who has very poor eyesight. But that's where that's where I really, really put up some some good numbers. And uh, you can actually ask the guy that was in my my last video, Luke. Um, we shot off at a hundred yards, and I, I'll blame most of his on him not having shot in a while. But my group was really, really good. And his his was was where my groups would be if I didn't practice. So, like I said, I'm not going to fault him for that because I, I do work a lot harder um, during the off season, or at least I've worked a lot harder this year than he has. He's busy. I understand I'm not faulting him. So let me know if you get something from this. I hope I really help somebody. I really do. I know I keep saying that, but I really, really want to help someone so they don't wind up kind of having to figure everything out like I did. I did have some people that, that helped me along and along, but it wasn't enough to really make me better until I started learning things myself. And I want to pass that knowledge on to you guys so you can be better. And hopefully, hopefully it will help you and you will improve. And maybe, who knows? One day you could be Levi Morgan. Who knows? But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for the comments. You guys are absolutely incredible. And I really appreciate each and every comment, each and every subscriber. And <clears throat> anyways, you guys stay safe, stay in the outdoors. God bless you. And I will catch you on the next one.